Now it's rare that I experience regret, but I absolutely regret having not picked up this blade to run it through its paces with you and enjoy the ride. And I'm talking about the White River Ursus 45. Now this knife design is nothing new. It's been around for years, but for some reason it tends to be a sleeper, not having that many reviews done online and not really making it into too many people's top five best belt knives and camp knives lists. And we're going to unpack today why that may be. Are there hidden issues in this design? Or is it like the pinnacle of belt knife companion designed fixed blades? We're going to unpack the whole thing, put it through its paces, and see what this has to offer. Thanks for joining me today, guys. I'm Aaron. This is Gideon's Tactical. Let's dive in. Now, as we get a good look at the blade, we can see right away it's a very simplistic workhorse kind of design which may be kind of the first issue on why you just don't hear a lot about it, see a lot about it, is because in a world of so many you know, exotic steels now, so many different designs at a glance, it may kind of get lost in the shuffle. But I feel like for those who know, no. For those of you who know knives, use knives, you know, they're not just collection pieces. When you see this tool, you know right away, okay, this is a workhorse. This has potential to be quite durable and quite capable. And guys, this screams in the capability realm. I was super impressed with how this has held up to the durability as well as functionality that you would want out of a four and a half inch blade that's 0.158 inches thick. I love that thickness on a very high flat grind means that it's going to have excellent edge geometry. It's going to be slicey and I really threw my, you know, all that I could at it and it absolutely held up to the two by four test, to our lateral testing, tip testing. This has a I wouldn't say a fine tip, but a precise tip, but it was very durable, held up to the five strikes into the two by four and then all of the general work, you know, going through super thick manila rope and doing utility tasks, but then, you know, splitting down and breaking down kindling that it can do that without any difficulty. And then, you know, get your finger up on that and do a, a nice fine notch or, you know, finesse a spear point on a piece of wood or do something like that, cut out a notch for a trigger, it's going to be able to do that. And then if you have to do a feather stick, absolutely. And just holding it around the fire and using it, if that's what you're thinking this tool could do, you, it will, the blade absolutely performs. The knife also comes with a fire seal that we'll unpack a little bit later with the sheath and a razor sharp 90 degree spine for throwing sparks or scraping wood. Now the power plant on this knife is S35 VN steel, which I have really come to respect and love on my field knives as a really suitable stainless steel. This one is Rockwell 58 to 60. White River does all their stuff in America. Built, it's a, an American factory. So they do an excellent job with this steel. They use it on a lot of their knives. And they've obviously focusing on durability, which I've seen with all my testing. And it has good wear resistance, not mind blowing. LMAX, M390, you know, those type of stainless are gonna have better wear resistance, but it has a good level of durability and it's relatively easy to resharpen in the field, which is important, particularly if you're taking this for days on end and you're gonna be using it quite a bit. So I really enjoy it on this knife, but let me know what you guys think about S35VN in general and particularly on your field knives. Have you used it a lot in field knives? Is this something that you'd like to try, particularly now with MagnaCut and so many other exotic blades? It seems like every other month we have a new steel coming out do you feel like it's kind of like old hat or something well worth using in rotation when you want a stainless steel blade now guys even though i'm out here in the woods this is still a youtube video so i'm going to ask you to hit that like button and if you're not yet a subscriber here at the channel consider subscribing becoming part of the gt crew here hit that bell notification button so that you can be notified every week when i put up new videos on gear and equipment helping you better stay equipped and prepared for whatever life throws your way now as we're unpacking whether or not this is the right piece of equipment to put into rotation it's time for me to tell you about today's sponsor which is huckberry and their 15 percent off sale going on november 15th and 16th and this is the one time of year where you can score that big a discount on one of my favorite pieces of apparel, which is the Flint and Tinder USA made waxed trucker jacket. I've had this for over a year now, used it in all kinds of conditions. This thing is so durable, looks good. I have the flannel lined version. You can get wool lined, unlined, as well as quilted. There's so many options, over six different color combinations, classic cut, tall cut. 
This jacket is built to wear in and not out and last you for years to come. Plus with an excellent selection of Danner boots and Mystery Ranch backpacks and with free returns for US customers available on many items through January 2024, Huckberry is an excellent place to start picking out those gifts during the holiday season. So guys, I'll have a link in the description below this video over to the Huckberry website where you can start exploring all the different pieces of gear and equipment that they have available. So hop on over and don't let this limited time offer pass you by. Now I have a truth dart aimed directly at the sub five inch fixed blade market. And as I begin to highlight it and it hits home, I think you guys are gonna begin to realize, maybe reconsider some of the knives either in your collection or that you're planning on picking up. What I'm discovering more and more is knives in this size range, often really make thin tapered necks right up here by this front bolt where your index finger would go. And if it's a general EDC knife or a tactical blade, that's fine because you're just using quick cuts. Usually you're not gonna sit there and woodscraft with it. But camping knives and bushcraft knives, I have several that fit that category that are just super thin and then your finger kind of floats and you kind of create a hot spot and fatigue because it's, it's just, you know, like you're not fully gripping the knife and therefore makes it not enjoyable to use when you're camping, backpacking, and bushcrafting. This knife absolutely executes that so, so, so well. And I'm so thankful for that. So that neck is nice and full. There's basically no tapering on these handles. Very organic, very basic. And again, that kind of goes back to like, why isn't everyone just singing the praises of this knife? I think it's just kind of, it looks generic, but it's so, so capable and functional for every type of task you would put a knife through, except for probably like a combat knife. Now, one factor that may be playing into the lack of popularity is the price. When this was released several years ago, it came in at $250, which was definitely on the top end of knives in the size range that were production knives made in America. Now, thankfully in 2023 with inflation, I'm not thankful for inflation, but the price hasn't gone up. They're usually still $250. And now you're seeing that a lot of American made knives in the size range are coming in right around like 225 to 250. So it becomes a lot more competitive as our dollars don't go as far, which is really frustrating. But We'll talk about how maybe the Kydex sheath plays a little bit into that in just a moment and after I run in a couple competitive options to give you some food for thought. Now, I will have links in the description below this video. Now, the first knife that comes to mind is the Cold Steel Republic. This is a Cold Steel exclusive design, but White River manufactures it for them. So it actually is using the same S35BN steel. It's gonna be about the same thickness and is going to have great like refinement, fit and finish and very similar quality. Now, it comes in right around 225 to 250. It does have a finger choil. It's about five inches overall blade length and comes with a really good, well-built leather sheath. So if you like something that has a little bit more of like an s -y vibe, but has a stainless steel and some other features in it, that would be a good alternative. The other designs that come to mind are the Bradford Knives Guardian series, particularly the 4.5 and the 5.5. These are the choilless designs. Uh, these knives have very similar quality, fit and finish, excellent designing, made in America. They usually will come with CPM 3V steel right around that same price point, about 250 to 275. They'll come with Kydex or leather sheath options that are pretty, not basic, they're good quality, but they're pretty um, no frills. And what we're about to see here in the Kydex sheath on this White River, it is like every bell and whistle and every capability imaginable. Really for me, the main difference comes in ergonomics. Though the Bradford knives are very contoured, the necks are much thinner. So my index finger tends to float and I just don't get quite the grip that I would prefer in those size of knives. Whereas the Ursus gives you a much better fuller grip, particularly around your index and thumb for indexing and using for extended periods. Now they did not hold back with this Kydex sheath. Guys, I have paid $100 for custom Kydex that sometimes did not fit and have as many features as this model comes standard. We're getting this pancake style Kydex sheath. So it does have a larger footprint. Taco would have been my preference, but we have huge, great drainage hole right there. Tons of lashing points. You get that matching fire steel with the clip that is removable. I have hiked with it upside down. The tension is great. You can slide it out. You could disconnect that thing if you want to just streamline it and fire steel really isn't your thing. Then what's awesome is the ambidextrous. So you can unscrew it, swap it, leather dangler with a button snap so you can put it onto your belt without taking your belt off. And if you like carrying your knives on your belt, 
but then you hike with a hip bearing, like load bearing belt for your backpack, this is a dream. It doesn't dig in, it rides low enough so it's out of the way of that hip belt, making it very easy to access but not becoming cumbersome and doesn't create a hot spot like many knife sheaths do when you are carrying like a heavy duty backpack. So if that's your thing, this is gonna be a dream for that. Now it's rather quiet, nice and secure, excellent tension, huge thumb ramp, easily deploys like that and then snaps big back into place. Now it has this, I, I wish it came with it, mine didn't have it uh, and I don't, I was looking at pictures and I didn't see this. There's this track here that if you were to pinch right there, it's locked in and I cannot actually deploy the blade. Now, what you would do is just get a set of Chicago screws with a little rubber gasket and you could slide it up and down. And when it's down, you have the tension to deploy, but when it's up, you're locked and then you could carry it upside down like on your shoulder strap and never worry about it falling out. Ne like some SEs do, like the SE5 has that and a few of their other models. I don't know why it didn't come standard with that, but it wouldn't be too difficult for a couple bucks to get that little extra level. But guys, th this alone, the value of this Kydex sheath is insane and one of the best you're going to find on a production blade. Well guys, though it's a pretty straightforward design that doesn't like, oh, scream like mind blowing. I have to tell you that one, I, I just regret having not picked it up and now having done it, I'm so glad that I did. And it really is checking literally everything that I would look for in a belt knife. The size, the ergonomics, the Kydex sheath, the quality that we know. I like S35VN quite a bit. And honestly, if you're looking for that style of knife and you want stainless steel, this one should be in your top five to be looking at. You should be considering this knife, particularly in 2023, with the price of new blades and new designs being really steep usually. This gives you so much and nothing needs to be upgraded. So guys, that's my mileage on this. This will be in other lists coming down the line because this is in just other videos because this is a very, 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 very capable tool. And I hope that it continues to be manufactured and just continually brought to the attention of us, the users, because I think it could eliminate the need for a lot of other belt knives in your collection and in a lot of different scenarios. But I look forward to hearing from you guys. Leave comments below. Uh, I can't wait to see your thoughts, particularly if you own one of these blades, what's been your experience. I look forward to seeing the discussion. Appreciate your time coming over today and hanging out with me. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.